G'day guys, thanks for joining us here on another cold and stormy Thursday night. It is absolutely freezing here in Queensland where I am. We just had a record low last night of one degrees. So thank you for joining us and tonight we're going to be talking about a bit of maintenance, um, a few tools that are handy to have and mainly stuff that's good to take away with you you can chuck in your day pack while you're out hunting because you know you don't want to have your hunting trip finish uh, too soon when you're out there and because something goes wrong and you, you could have prevented by having a very simple toolkit. So I'll bring Jason in here. And G'day Jason, how are you? What's happening man? How you been? Oh, right. That hair of yours is getting greyer every, every week that I see you. <laughs> I reckon having shaven for a week, I mean that busy and uh, that's even going grey. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, put, Pushing 50, mate, it'll happen to you. Hey, I'm not going bald, though. <laughs> yeah, mine's not looking too good. It's getting a bit patchy at almost 40, so I'm still yeah. in the 30s, mate, so I haven't hit the big 40 yet. That's uh, next year. Uh, it all goes downhill. It all goes downhill at 40. But, uh, yeah, it's been been a good week. I got out and did a couple of gun reviews, did a 22 Magnum, a Lithgow, and I also did a... Oh, what's the other one? A Dickinson shotgun, straight pull shotgun and timber. I know you got the synthetic, but I got the timber one. Uh, it's going to be another review where things don't exactly work how it's meant to go. Uh, just like the Savage Axis that some, everyone seemed to like with the screws falling out. So if you haven't, <laughs> se if you haven't seen that review, that's up. Um, yeah, the Savage Axis, two thumbs down from me. That was yeah. a 308. I didn't so think that with the poor thing. The uh, what the, nah. the screws fell out of the stock. The action screws fell out. That's uh, not really ideal when you have a shot of it. But you know that's why you should always have some of the tools we're going to talk about. Definitely, as I just said, you don't want to be out hunting, and it's cut short because something that you could have fixed on the spot with um, a simple little toolkit. Yeah. So I'll read the first question from Patreon just before we get started. Because they come back to last week. Don't forget it, to tell them to subscribe, man. You've got to hit that button. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe to the channel, dudes. Um, it really does. And hit the thumbs up and definitely subscribe. We're pushed. We've had last week, we had record numbers of subscribers, a couple of hundred in the week. So I was really happy. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're watching this. It's not hard. Just hit the, bo hit the button down below and the notification bell. And I'm putting out two to three videos every week on guns and gadgets and anything shooting related. Hey, so, I say it's just, guys, just give him a thumbs up just for his grey hair. So, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any reason, give him a like, give him a like, <laughs> and, and well, subscribe. Well, our gun banning video had the most um, – most uh, views in one week, we've got 16,000 views. And I think almost, don't hold me to it, almost 600 thumbs up, So, which is good. And when, when we had about 25 miserable bastards that um, that had to give the old thumbs down, but uh, that doesn't really matter. I'm not sure if they're giving us the thumbs down because they didn't like our content or they didn't like the gun bands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. More than likely they don't like me because, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly PC. So, also, you can find Jason on his podcast. So, I will be putting all the links down below, which uh, is a well worth. And he actually had, we'll talk about this later on, won't talk about it now, but you had a very interesting guest this week, didn't you? Yeah, should we release it? I'll find out. We'll talk about it. Maybe yeah. we won't mention who it is. I've had, I've had this person on before, so it's no real secret, but anyway. Yeah, yeah we'll knock a couple of questions off first, and then uh, we'll get back into that. Okay, this is from Chris from Patreon. So if you definitely want your questions answered, sign up to Patreon, mine or Jason's or both of ours for even five bucks a month. Every cent helps both our shows. And one yeah. thing, Happy Hunter, if he's watching, he's uh, he jumped on too. Happy Hunter. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if there's more. Oh, and Aussie Capitalist was on the week before that too. So we can yep. see him there in the live stream racking up some uh, questions there. So... Yeah, I've got one from Happy Hunt here from the Patreon. Yeah. So this is uh, Chris. I have really enjoyed these Thursday night gun banter. Last week was toxic with trolls spamming chat. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, 
my questions my question was uh top 10 and got spammed off the by the from the 243 tards yes they are um <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we fixed that problem because we banned, oh, man, eight or nine people um, during the show and after the show for just be, being absolute tools. Uh, the, so now his question is, I just started shooting F-Class and the RCBS reloading kits okay. Are ah, the RBCS reloading kits okay to get started for 308? Thanks, Azza and Jason. Well, that's what I brought. My very first kit was one of those for reloading, and I still use it today. The press is absolute bomb proof. Yeah, I've uh, got the new. I've got the same brand as you, the RBCS. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> the RCBS. Anyway, yeah, no, they're good. I've got the the Rock Chucker, um, really good kit, single press. I like to because I don't reload all that often, just when I need to. So it's best off for me to do the whole process, putting guys in, setting everything up and just keeps your skills good to, if you're not reloading all the time, if you're like Aaron, the, you know, the rich bastard, he's always pumping out, you know, ammo and loads and, um, you know, going shooting. So he probably does a lot more than me. So, but you know, I like doing it single press, set them up. Good to go. Yep. And you'll see on our reloading video that I put out oh, a month or so ago, my system of doing it, where you get the basics in that kit and then you just build from there. You'll get the electronic trimmer. You'll get the electronic scales for a powder dispenser. So you'll build on that. But the basic kit, fantastic. Could not recommend it more. Uh, Hornady also makes some good kits as well and some good gear. So I do like those. My friend just bought a Hornady kit and, yeah, it works fine. But uh, definitely the uh, that press is bomb-proof. Any of those good brands, you know, they'll work. I mean, you know, Hornady. Yeah. RCBS, Lyman, they're all good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just make sure it's nice and solid. It's not going to twist or move. But I yeah, know no. I that shoots, um, you know, nuts off a rabbit with all the lead dies at like 400 metres. So, and the lead yeah. press, it does the job. It does the job. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep. I said, that's what my mate just brought was a lead press. To, he's his first time uh, reloading. And it, yeah, it works very well for him. So uh, we'll answer one from here uh, before we get into our first bit of show and tell. Shane Gibb, g'day, Aaron and Jace. I uh, have a question for you, fellas. I now bring this up. Um, I don't have a chronograph, and uh, my go to load is 243 in a 20 inch varmint barrel. Do I lose much velocity with a shorter barrel? Well, two, what's two, your views? Three. Two, three, two, two, three, you said. Yep, um, two, three, yeah. yeah. It's really Not popular in New Zealand right now. The guys are getting like seven mags and some of those bigger calibers and cutting them down, and they're calling it into like a, a bush pig style rifle. They're calling it the bush pig. Look it up on um, on YouTube. You'll have a see it there. A lot of these guys, I mean, they get to use suppressors, which kind of you'd probably have to use a muzzle brake, you know, short of the barrel. It's probably going to lose a little bit of velocity, and it's probably going to bark a bit more than it normally would. Um, compared to, you know, say if you've got a longer barrel. So I wish we could use suppressors. Wouldn't that be awesome? But, yeah, you'll lose a bit, man. But what you'll gain, I think, is, you know, a gun that's manoeuvrable as well out in the bush. Pick it up. I did it to a two, two, three years ago. Cut it down to, uh, I think it was about whatever the factory minimum was, 17 inches, 16 inches. And then I put a, I put a break on it. Just I didn't need it for the two, two, three, but it was like a dedicated foxing call gun. Mate, you pick it up in your hand and just make – throw it around pretty much it was so light so yeah man not to lose much if you're gonna long range shoot probably a different story but if you're just gonna make 100 meter shooting not gonna matter at all man you're gonna slay them hard and end of story yeah no i agree with you uh the rule of thumb is on an average caliber every inch you lose you go shorter is 40 or go longer you gain 40 feet per second so that's an average rule of thumb up to a certain point and then after that it doesn't really make much difference so yeah up to about 30 inches is pretty much as long as you really need to go on any rifle for your standard calibers to get them punching out further so yes definitely um, you will lose some that's for sure but hunting distances once again jason up to 300 yeah. meters is all that matters exactly yep so what have we got for a few tools 
Um, Patreon questions. Let's get them out of the way. We'll answer them quickly because we don't want, and most of the guys saw last week too, that bloody, I don't know if it's the app that we use, but as we scroll down, it was just, if we weren't quick enough, they were just scrolling down. And I don't know if there's a minimum amount of comments we can have at one time, but anyway, we'll... Uh, yeah. So I was getting clogged up as well, and we got rid of the idiots, so it was all good. Okay, next Patreon, Luke. Hi, Jace, Aaron and Jason. I have a gun I would like to sell but have never tried. What's the best way to go about selling secondhand guns? Thanks for your advice, Luke. And there's a part two. A guy answered him. Great question. This is Miko. Great question. I'd like to know how online process works for sites like Ozgun Sales. Do you? Uh, how do you get the gun from the seller to the dealer so you can pick it up? Well, you have experience with Oz Gun Sales, don't you? Yeah, he uh, helps me out. We run, run some ads for him on the show. So, yeah, you just go on there, advertise them, pick your dealer that you want to transfer through. If the person's in your local area, you just go to the gun shop, take your uh, registration down there. He signs it into the other guy's name. You get your money and you move on. Um, if it's interstate, Make sure you get your money first, obviously, and any shipping fees, if that's what you agree to. Get that money into your bank account. Send him an email saying that there's been a sale taking place. Grab his details. Grab your details. Go to the gun shop. Put his details down, where the gun's going to, which gun shop it's got, which dealer. And then that dealer will call that dealer, make sure it's all legit. Then the gun gets shipped to them. The, the buyer goes and picks it up and done deal, man. So, I mean, Oz Gun Sales, um, Dave, he's a really good guy, a really good guy, actually. Yeah, thinks I'm very much like me and Aaron. So if you are going to advertise, go to ozgunsales.com. Really nice guy and always been a supporter of mine. So, you know, there's other sites out there, of course, but, you know, and you probably, most people probably know which ones they are. But if I had to pick one, it's him because, you know, he's been a good supporter. So can't can't go wrong with him. And it's a great site. And I've, I've uh, had some – he's given me some free stuff so I could advertise, obviously, because the arrangement that we've got and all my stuff is sold from that website. So if that's not good enough, I don't know what is. Yes, definitely. And there's a couple of others like Use Guns and that. But, yeah, Dave at uh, Oz Guns is very good. But, yeah, basically you get the number as well and you can negotiate a price sometimes and sort it out as well. And because you know, some people do want more information, they'll ask you a bit more, how many rounds has it had? And I find most you got, Use Guns has only ever shot uh, 50 rounds. That's what they all seem to say. <laughs> Brand new condition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so you definitely suss the, the gun out and maybe even ask for more pictures if you need them before you lay down your money as well. So next question is Happy Hunter. Hi, Aaron. I've had my 223 Hauer 1500 fitted with a Timley trigger. It has an extremely light trigger pull. When I get When I let other shooters use it, they complain about the lightness of the trigger but can't can't give me a decent reason as to why. I personally love it and haven't missed a shot since I've had the have it installed. What is your take on that? And do you prefer a light or heavy trigger? Well, I use Timley triggers um, in my custom guns, and I swapped it out on my long distance rifle that I run at eight ounces. Basically, you sneeze at it, and it's going to go off. But that is a lying down, dedicated, long-range, one-mile gun on my 300 rum. But, yes, uh, I don't like them too light for the hunting rifles, only because, and if you fall over or something and knock it, there's that chance that it could go off. But if you keep it around two pounds, it should be fine. And they are cleaner, nicer triggers than most factory triggers, so people are probably just not used to it or used to a lighter trigger. A lot of these triggers come quite heavy, and I think basically because uh, so if something goes wrong, like an accident, they can't get blamed for it. Look what happened to Remington, that massive recall. Excuse me, that massive recall they had. Yeah. Because of safety in the triggers. You've got to, you've got to swap out. They, they're paying to have all the triggers swapped out. Depends on the gun you get, eh? It's just... Um... You know, I like a light trigger. If any gun that I'm just going to put on the ground and move like a long-range gun, doesn't matter how light you put it because you're not walking around with it. Sometimes I've got that 7 mil Magnum. I've made it just a little bit more because I don't want to, you know, any chance of it even thinking about going off or if you brush it against a tree or, 
or a twig or something just don't need it so make it a little bit heavier but yeah nothing worse than heavy triggers you just don't know when they're going to go off you jerk the trigger Ugh, horrible Ugh, horrible but yeah. then again some of the triggers on my guns are pretty good enough not to have to warrant i think going spending 600 bucks on an aftermarket trigger so depends how what your gun you got if you've got a gun that's 500 bucks it probably will absolutely help you if you've got a gun worth two grand you may not need it you know so it depends yeah definitely i agree i agree totally so here we go Miko. this is the last patreon one for the night what are your top three caliber picks for long range target shooting well, we are going to make a video on this one but uh yes my top three would be 300 ram 6.5 prc and 308 <laughs> hey? All the guns you've got <laughs> exactly only by the best listen uh, if I pick one We'll pick three. I'm going to pick. Well, I'm going to be the same, similar too. I think I've covered all my bases. If you say long range shooting, hunting, you know, if if I, I went small, so obviously I went two, four, three. So don't fucking clog up the comments, you bastards, with two, four, three comments. Um, yes. Then I went two sixty Remington, and then I've got the three hundred Wim Mag. So I think that covers you know pretty pretty good base of your low uh, you know low calibers to your high calibers from small animals to big animals if you're hunting so you know if i had my time over i probably would have gone you know but they're not not in the country in that bagara i would have gone that 300 prc i reckon i would have gone that but at the end of the day man 300 wind mag is going to slice through anything in this country pretty much unless you maybe go up north and you're shooting scrub balls but even then maybe good shooting with 200 plus grain bullets is going to be enough anyway so and your cost goes up so man i'd say 300 prc or 300 wind mag uh, one of the six five calibers and then a 250 or a 243 mate for your varmint your long range varmints or you just your general hunting it's going to work for you yeah well we'll we'll do a video on the long range a, a live stream one week about the uh long range calibers and We'll do another one on hunting calibers because that's a big one we get. People all want to know about what we use and what's good for hunting. Uh, everything apart from 243. Man, the comments are flooding in again, guys. Yeah. Crazy. Let's hit them hard. Okay. We haven't even talked about any of our – we'll do that in between questions because we want to do it quickly. Yeah. We're already okay. 20 minutes in and we, <laughs> we've answered one <laughs> question from the actual stream. <laughs> Okay, get get into it, Jason. You do this one. All right. Uh, we already did that one. Next one, you goober. Go down to okay. Odin. Okay, sorry, Odin. Come on, yep. man. Start working the deck properly, dude. <laughs> no, stop, your, stop your bitching and just read. Gun shop told me you shouldn't really bother cleaning your 22 LR barrel until your grooming starts to spread out. The wax coating of the bullets uh, lines your barrel to help with accuracy. Listen, I've heard that too. Um, you know, there are wax on the bullets if you feel them between your fingers. I think that's true. I'm more worried just about rust on the bore. That's what I'm worried about. Now, I, I, if you've got a, a bore scope, you can try and have a look at it to see after a while. But, yeah, I mean, listen, I'll, every month or two, I'll just, you know, if I'm using a lot, I'll clean it out. If I'm going to put it up for like three months, I'm not going to shoot it. I'll definitely clean the barrel. Uh, mate, when you get out to a farm, bang, 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 shoot about 10, 15 shots, throw in a couple of cans or some, you know, some siding in. And, mate, you're good to go. It's going to close right up again. It's going to, you know, foul up. It's going to get great, you know, the wax on it, and it's going to be good to go. You know, people say, like, don't clean them. You know, I've seen some pretty rusty 22 LR barrels, guys, on the inside. So, um, you know, I, I just – I like to look after my stuff, so I, I clean it. But, you know, I don't shoot all the time. If I was shooting every week, yeah, I probably wouldn't clean it every week. i just wipe the outside and, and call it a day and put it away and shoot it again next week. But probably once a month, once every two months, I'd take it out, give it a full clean and make 22 is cheap, put 15 rounds through it, 20 rounds, and you, you're ready to go again. Yeah, I agree. I clean mine probably every oh, half a dozen times I take it out. But then if I come back from a hunting trip, I'll clean every gun thoroughly, just like scrub everything take them apart and just take the bolts apart, just clean everything. Because, you know, as you know, that red dust in the outback, it's an absolute disaster. It's horrible stuff. So that's, uh, yes, 22. Most of the time I do 22, I'm just up out of the farm here and uh, I just blast away and, yeah, you know, I don't even, I come home, just chuck them in the cupboard. That's pretty much about it. So here's uh, Shane. Sometimes I clean my rifles with WD-40. It won't hurt them, will it? Well, it's more of an sort of an oily base. If you want oily sort of crap all over your rifle, I guess it wouldn't hurt. I know. But, uh, 
buys that in five liters like anything for the outside maybe we'll do one on that products and that i think that actually brings up a good point i use yeah. a uh, um inox normally for inside the barrel so inox um if i'm on the outside i'll either use most people will know lanox the uh, the sheep's wool one it does attract a bit of dust so don't you know don't get the heavy duty or lanatex another one have lanatech heavy duty hd um the hd is a bit too much i've i sprayed that under my four-wheel drive um and under the tray just to stop rust and that man five years later it's still doing its job because i can't get the shit off so um i just go the general purpose or there's another product by lanatech um it was called uh ultimate protection or up uh it's now called steel seal from lanatech steel seal which is basically the uh, derivative of lanolin and it doesn't have the hugely sticky qualities like the general purpose or the heavy duty uh the heavy duty is heavy duty man like that i would use that for marine trailers and stuff like that but uh just your standard inox mate uh buy five liters of inox um, on a patch, mate, pff, that last year, 15 years, that stuff, man, like run, run you know, wipe your guns over with it. Um, normally, I use that Lanatech um, Ultimate Protection or the now called Steel Seal just on the outside. I use that on my four-wheel drive. I use it on underneath on my leaf springs, spray the, you know, the rails, the chassis rails in your car. Yeah, it gets dusty, but that's the whole point. It seals it out from moisture so you don't have any rust and um, spray it in your corners. You know, I'd really love a, a hoist, a car hoist, but. I don't have any room for one, but I would get one if I could so I could spray underneath my car. But, yeah, man, a couple of products there for you. Um, WD-40, I know a guy that wipes his guns down with that, no rust, perfect. Yeah, I just uh, use a bit of G96 and basically, or just some um, gun oil they've got lying around to spray it on. I pretty much just grab something to spray anything on it. I'm not really too fussy myself. Uh, Cerakoting's fantastic um, because – you just give it a wipe down with a rag, and that's all you need. It protects everything. All you got to really clean is the bore. If you get a good Cerakota, a certified one that knows what he's doing, and uh, he will, and you ask him, he'll give you a price, and he'll Cerakote every nut and bolt inside that gun. Pull your, pull your whole bolt apart and spray every single part. Micro slick it, pull, do, coat every screw for you. So basically, all you do is wipe it down with a rag, a clean rag. And then clean the bore out, and you're away laughing. Uh, that adds money for 500, 600 bucks, depending uh, what you want, Cerakoted, and how, what sort of pattern, if it's a plain color, but that all goes up. So it's, uh, yes, I'm not fussy. I'm not as fussy as what Jason is with cleaning his guns. He's really fussy. He just yep. chucks them in, doesn't care if they yep. hit each other. Uh, I've got every one of mine in a gun sock sitting in the safe, mate. So if they, uh, if I had a bigger safe, I wouldn't bother with that. But I've only got like a fourteen gun, which is really like a seven, and I've got like nine. But anyway, good question yeah. there from Henry Smith there too. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Every time Jason comes up to my place and stays, he's just horrified. Absolutely, it um, <laughs> into my stomach with the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just walks around my gun room, just like it, head in his hand, just doesn't know what to say. Yep. Okay. Yeah, mate. I've yeah. had this problem just a couple of weeks ago, which rarely happens for me. The best way to clean surface rust. Listen, depends how bad it is. Go to Bunnings. It's called four or steel wool. So four zero steel wool. It's in the paint section. Excuse me. Normally, what you'll do is you go straight into Bunnings. The paint section is normally on the bottom, let near all your silicons and stuff like that. Four zero steel wool. It's like ultra fine. Don't worry, it's not going to hurt anything. Just don't press too hard. Obviously, it almost feels like cotton ball. So you rip a piece off, get a bit of gun oil, and just in your with your fingers, just start on the barrel slow. Wait until it comes off. You know what I mean? Um, that works for me. I mean, in my gun safe, I've got one of those um, golden rods. So I drilled a hole in the side of my safe and I put the golden rod through, then I put a connection. So that brings up the heat in the safe and pushes out the moisture. So my gun safe is generally about 45 to 60% humidity compared to say somewhere it can go to 80. So yeah, man, it works. Double four or steel wool. Man, just take it easy on it. Make sure it's four or so zero, 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 zero. It works good, man. Bit of gun oil, off you go. WD-40, Inox, Lanox, gun oil, whatever, done. And you can use it to, for tinder as well to start a fire when you're exactly. up there. And also, too, if you're going to... Um, so, yeah, I, 
one question too. I was going to say, if you're going to, if it's really bad, you're not going to be able to get it off, man. Take it, get it sandblasted, and get it seracoded. Yeah, yeah. You don't want it to get too bad because you will get pitting in the steel. Once it's pitted, it's not coming back from that. Uh, I use a bowl of rice in my big bank vault safe because you can't drill into it. The walls are like that thick, and I just put a bowl of rice in every month. I throw the bowl of rice out and put a new one in there, and it sucks all the moisture up. Because that is sealed. There's no drilling holes in that thing, as you've seen. So we'll right. show a couple of things off. Um, something I've, I use basically on a daily basis as well is this real avid uh, Pro Tool Max. This thing is just like a leather man. It's got all your stuff in it and My opens up. One. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, has your pliers. It has. Oh, no. Car- this is real yeah. avid as well. I didn't even know. It's real avid. Look. Sweet. Didn't yeah. even know. Is it one of these? Yeah, the real avid gun tool. Here's me saying I've got a different yeah. one or a different one. <laughs> My mate gave me this as a present, actually. So has it got the um has it got the torch on it? No, nah, I've got like hawks, got a few, you know, wrenches and stuff, like a few hex yep. keys and whatever stuff. Don't know what's in there. No, that's supposed to hold something like some connections, but it must have lost them somewhere. Yeah, yeah man. Rule avid stuff's good. So I've been using it today because I've been wiring up my house, um, new replacing lights and uh, wire cutter, removable. I cut fencing wire with it the other day, so it was good. So this has worked really well. It's got everything, 31 tools in it. Got your choke for all your different shotguns. You got your uh, carbon scrapers, beer bottle opener. Ah, uh, geez, what else? Yeah, decent knife. Yeah, cleaning hook. Uh, Punches and, to get out your little, you know, to get out, you know, pins, action pins or whatever for like straight pulls. and. Oh. Yep, and it comes with, I can get it to work, your screwdriver comes out and it comes with a whole heap in the sheath, double, double-sided uh, bits. For everything you need for your scopes, this is good. I use it every day at work and around the house. And as you said, this one is awesome. I like it. This one comes with a torch that's actually magnetic and removable. I've used this a couple of times as well. So you can just uh, stick it on and use it as well. Um, it, uh, like I've used it on the side of my car when I've been trying to fix something. So it definitely does work. Yeah, these things are great. Absolutely great. And I got here somewhere. I did. Uh, here. For the handguns. The, uh, uh, a Glock tool, but you can use it for all handguns. Most of these connections will work for um, all handguns. I've used this on my SIGs. So that's pretty cool. It's a front sight tool removal. If you ever try to remove a front sight from a Glock, you know what a pain in the ass it is. All spring-loaded, extremely light. This goes with me everywhere in my pistol range bag. It's always good to have some tools, man. Exactly. So, explosive. Hi, Aaron and Jace. I'd like to know how many times you can reuse the same brass when reloading 308 in his case. Well, I uh, tried it on um, 20 firings at the moment, so it's not too yeah. bad. If you were Neil. Like you might get more. That's something I'm probably going to start looking at, especially if you get some of these like Aaron 6.5 PRC and stuff like that. You may want to get longer out of it, but, you know, is it worth the extra time and money? You're probably going to pay four, $500 for a decent one unless you can build one yourself. So, you know, it just yeah. depends. So, you know, if it's something – I'd look at annealing too. You know, it's always good to get – you know, keep your brass in good nick, you know, shoot it until it splits. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I've I buy three. I wait. I load up by like two thousand lots, and and I've only ever come across a couple of broken ones ever. I just keep reloading and keep resizing and reloading and resizing, and once I split, throw them out. I'm up to yeah, good. The batch I got now of two thousand, probably oh, a good ten to fifteen times without any problems. A like three hundred rum, and that's a lot of powder and a lot of pressure. I've reloaded those at least a dozen times, and I've only ever had one split case of the rum. You can use them for quite a bit. Some people reckon don't keep using them 
too much, like after five rounds, because of the uh, every time you resize it, you're thinning out the neck. But personally, I haven't had any problems, and um, I seem to hit everything that I point the gun at. So yeah, it's uh, just always keep an eye on it though, and you, a lot of times you can't tell when it is split. Uh, especially pistol stuff as well, until you've actually cleaned it, and then you can uh, see where the cracks are. And always check at the end. I check about three or four times through the reloading process. Every time I handle it, I look at it. You know, when I reload it, I look about it, I spin it, just to make sure there's no cracks anywhere. Just better, guys. You don't want shit to blow up in your face, guys. So take care. Um, oh, Aussie capitalist. Just cracked a beer and a cigar. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. I've had a, uh, haven't had a cigar for a while because um, I had a bit of a health scare and almost died about two weeks ago. A uh, massive attack. So Look, I haven't Neil, had any cigars. Hard work for us. Hit the like button, everyone. Nice one, Neil. Neil H. Yeah. yeah. Hit the Hit like button. button. Thank you, Neil. Uh, you should get Neil to do our PR for you. You should get Neil. We employ Neil to do your PR for you. <laughs> no, I don't make any money out of the show. I'm going backwards financially. I uh, can't hire anyone. Everything's volunteer or bordering on slave labour. One of the two. Uh, here's Neil. Purchasing a 308 76 Remington with a scope red dot. What red dot should I put on it? Ah, the little Bushnells I find are very good. Um, yeah, I don't mind the little Bushnell red dots. Of course, aim point are awesome. They're almost indestructible, but you rarely pay for them. And I've got a Bushnell Elite on my Ruger Charger 22. Um, Vortex makes some. Um, most of them are pretty good. I I've find any experience with red dots, so it's all you, man, on this one. Yeah, just don't go. The, just don't go the eBay's. Do not go the eBay's. So I, <laughs> they're the ones that they, um, they say airsoft that all these gel gel blaster guys use. They'll rattle part in no time. So I'd say start at Bushnell and work your way up, depending on how much money you want to spend. It's like anything in the shooting arena. Just it just keeps going up and up, and you can just spend hundreds or you can spend thousands. It doesn't. Yeah, just, there's new things all the time. I think Trigicon make one as well, a really good one. So And so does um, Leupold. But my mate's got a Leupold one, and it goes off with movement. So when he's driving around, the thing turns itself on, mm -hmm. and the batteries drain. So I don't think that's a really good idea at all. Uh, a few guys here. Love the RCBS, not the RBCS. Aaron's creating his new brand, RBCS. The yes, exactly. To RCBS. <laughs> you make one, mis you make one mistake, and you never ever hear the end of it. <laughs> hey, you made that mistake last week too, a week before. So I just thought you'd get it right this week. But I brought a Lee Lock ch uh, Challenger. Yep. Exactly. Uh, I don't really know if there is any real bad ones. I've never heard anybody say that, that the single stages are bad. I've never I've never experienced it. Mean, Lee's made to a price point, obviously, but man, like I said, I know guys that are shooting the nuts off rabbits at you know crazy distances with cheap gear. I know one guy doesn't even have an electronic scale. He's got one, you know, small little hands, Lee, Lee um single stage press. He's got a balance beam scale, a trickler, uh, a cheap little, um, what do they call them, with the pow powder thrower. Mate, it's a tiny little set, fits into a small bag, and he's reloading and shooting crazy like groups. It's just you don't have to have all the expensive gear. It just You can, but it's not necessary, I don't think. No, no. We uh, were talking about this week. We, well, when you come up next, uh, when the borders open, we're going to look at doing a review on your – little Lee in the field kit because that actually does look like quite a good little system, something I'm quite interested in. Because when you go to the range, you know, I normally take my loads there. I test them out. I go, that was pretty good. I go home, load more, and then come back again and pay the range fee next week and travel 45 minutes to get to the range. So I'm going to pack a little kit and I'm just because you've got like an area at my range to go and do some reloading. So I'll have the, all the brass ready to go. 
primed and ready to go. All I've got to do is say, yeah, that was a good load. Bring my little scale, bring my trickler. Do, do, do. You've got the Lee little powder cups where you can scoop the, the powder, put them in, work out which powder you've got, trickle it up, put them in, seat the bullet with the little Lee hand primer or sorry, hand, you know, little kit. Mate, bang, done. Go out there and shoot them again and go, yep, that's perfect. Put them over the chronograph and go, yep, that's a good load. Man, done. One sitting if you want. If you want to try some more, reload a few more, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. That's um, yeah, I'm really interested to see how that goes and actually having a go of it because that's something that I have been thinking of doing. I'm actually doing it with Gary from Brown's Plant Firearms on Saturday, doing some load development with one of his big elephant guns. So I'll try and get a few things up on Instagram. Um, of that, he has some absolute massive bangers. Um, I think he's got a four one six as well. So we'll uh, be taking a few of those out on Saturday afternoon. We did we shot at night with them last time. Jesus, the fireballs! It was uh, yeah, pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. So we're going to do some load development in the field this Saturday afternoon. He's got a few bits and pieces he uses for that. So there you go, Jason. What are your thoughts on the six five Creedmoor in American Predator? Yeah, I don't know. Are they the cheaper ones, if I'm correct? I'm not sure. Um, uh, yep. They, I put them in the top five list of video that I put out of hunting rifles for $100,000. And they made, I can't remember, number three or something, four or three. Yeah. But, yeah, they're good. My thing is, like I said, just not just this particular brand, but, yeah, just spend as much as you can afford, mate. If that, if that if that's that gun, perfect, go with it. If it's, um, you know, you need to wait another month to get something a bit better. Do, yeah, do that. You know what I mean? Depends what your budget is, man. It all comes down to. Don't be some people. Sometimes people are in a rush to, you know, get into shooting. You want to buy the first thing they see, which is good. Hey, I did that too. Don't worry. Uh, plenty of times. And, you know, you, you end up regretting some purchases sometimes. Not saying you'll regret this one, but just, you know, if that's what you want, that's what you that's what your budget allows, go for it, mate. Go for it. But if your budget stretches further, wait a month or two and get something, you know, a bit better. But um, yeah, it'll do the job, mate. Good caliber. Um, mate, you'll be, you know, Hitting long range targets if you want. You'll be 6.5 good BC bullets, Hornady, Sierra, off you go. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's, um, I've, I've shot the, it's a basically a Ruger American, um, but I think they do it up in camo and a couple of small changes. They're very good pricing. I think they're only about 800 bucks, something like that. I can't quite remember what they were in the videos a few weeks ago, um, but I have shot a couple of them and, they work fine. The Predators, um, never had a problem with them. They Okay, they're not real heavy. The stock is a bit tinny, thin, but hey, for an $800, $900 gun, not a problem really. Uh, I don't mind them at all. And I think the Predators come camouflaged or an OD green. So no, they're not bad. If you like it, buy it. And 6.5 Creedmoor, very flat shooting round. Not bad for hunting, probably not for hunting big game because it is a very small projectile. But, yeah, for varmint hunting and small critters and stuff, yeah, Creedmoor's fine. You can punch it out a little bit further. 140s, uh, man. You shoot 140s. That'll smash deer. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I just like something bigger. So, like, sure. yeah. Can no, 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 nothing wrong with stepping up, uh, but I mean, I know guys that have shot some big animals with the 140 ELDMs or 143 ELDX, like I'm using. Don't listen to that advice, bad. <laughs> it's, uh, this this, way. don't listen not, to that advice from this guy right here. I, I like the 6.5 creep all around because it's flat for target shooting, but it's just a small little dinky little little round. 40, man, like 308s. Most of the people are using 308 150s. Uh, yeah, I'd definitely be going the 6.5 PRC then. Uh, that, a magnum so round. Not one. You, everybody's got to have one now. Yeah, everyone should have one. And this will lead into one of our next questions coming up. So, Happy Hunter, this isn't the question though. I'm watching you guys while reloading 38 special target loads for my section 686. What's the best tool for cleaning out lead of the barrel? Well, I just use on my revolvers. Uh, uh, just well, what is it? Um, well, I use Eliminator for copper, but for lead, I just man, I got so much cleaning stuff here. Whatever I grab, I just chuck down the barrel and just scrub it with a copper brush. And mine don't really get all that clogged up. 
and then I just run a few patches through it and it's done. But, yeah, the brand that makes, which I can't remember, so I took my tongue, the brand that makes the Eliminator, they got a lead remover as well. Hoppies make a good lead remover. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. I just get a, a mop in there and that and just scrub it out and, yeah, never really have a problem. But most of my projectiles I'm shooting now, apart from 22s, are all copper cased. I just buy uh, Hornady or when I do it in bulk for my 9 mils, just bulk packs of those uh, berries, which come down quite cheap. So, so you don't really get much lead fouling at all. I, I tried casting, but it was just so – casting your own bullets, just take, it's an extra step. It just takes so long. If you've got lots of time, yeah, it's probably worth it. But uh, – and it is a bit of fun, but I don't have time for casting. I, I yeah, barely have time for reloading. But now uh, casting, that's an entire day to do it. So this is what I was going to say. What books or website would you guys recommend to learning to reload? Jason? I reckon, mate, just um, you've got a couple of different books, but, you know, if you want to go to a book, some of the main, main uh, bullet manufacturers make books as well. But, you know, again, just look at YouTube. But, again, always go back. The most important thing I can't stress enough is go back to the manufacturer of the powder and make sure you're doing your min. Aaron always goes to the max. Don't do that, in my opinion, right? Start low, maybe go a little bit above the minimum, right? <laughs> and then build, I, 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 listen, I'll tell you why. I had the 243. I was shooting the 87 grain VMAX. And I well, there's your problem, 243. I can't, I can't remember the exact load, what it was, but I know it was 2209, and I think it was 41 to 44 and a half. Man, I was blowing primers at 43 and a half. So, and the smoke coming out of the ejection port. I'm like, ooh, hang on. And there was a bit of marring on the bullet, on the bolt face. So I'm thinking, well, that's not right. You know, what's going on here? Um, only to go back to one of their older books and it said something completely different. So, anyway, my point is just start low, check out your primers, see if you're not getting any cratering or they're flattening out and all that type of stuff. And just, just, just make sure you have a look. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you need photos, again, just type in you know, uh, reloading on YouTube, and then they'll run you through the process. It's pretty simple. There's, you just got to make sure you charge properly. Don't overcharge. Make sure you're using the right powder. Start low. Don't go to max. And then once you get more experience, then you can, you know, tweak a few things. But, yeah, just be careful, guys. You don't want to blow your hand off on the front of the foregrip when you're trying to shoot. So take your eyes out. Um, well, first thing you should be doing is going and looking up my reloading video because that is – the only way you should be reloading because that's the way I do it. So <laughs> definitely go look at my reloading video. Shameless. Jason and me, yep, Jason and me did a live car podcast on, um, on it as well. So a few videos back, I think we did one on reloading stuff. Just, uh, don't, just don't start from max, max power. Okay, <laughs> now then start from max and then no. go down, go down five loads and half grain increments, that's what I do. Perfect. You'll find one that works. None of this minimum rubbish. Uh, you're not, not interested. Exactly, not exactly minimum, but, you know, start maybe, you know, let's say you got 41 to 45, start at, say, 42, and then go up from there. You know, yeah, you do want to get the highest speeds, but, again, it's not absolutely necessary. You know, you need to be able to hit it. It doesn't matter how fast your bullet goes. Yeah, okay, it gets there quicker, less affected by wind. But, that at a distance, that's not going to be what? Okay, let's say I'm clicking and using my scope. Let's say it's uh, five mils at 500. Okay, it might be 5.2 at 500. Boo hoo, just dial 5.2. It's not that important to worry about speed, speed, speed. I say accuracy and a low, a low standard deviation over speed any day of the week. Yeah, it is a very fine point. You, they've got to be consistent. So you're consistent. Readings yeah. on the chronograph. Yeah, if it's That's not consistent, sure. and I'm having that trouble with the 243, like I said last week, with the 70 grain Sierra, it's not the fault. I don't know what it is, whether I don't have enough powder in the case, the bullet's too small, because I'm using the exact same powder charge for the 70 grain uh, 243 as I am for the 260, which is 42 and a half grains of 2209. So uh, one's a 140 grain bullet and one's a 70 grain. So there's a lot more extra dead space within that case. So hopefully with the 87s, I can you know, remove a little bit of that dead space and maybe that's what's causing the issue, but we'll see. 
For my 3006, I do run a compressed load, so it's a maximum running 3,000 feet a second, and you can actually hear the powder crunching as you're putting in the projectile, but that is in the um, ADI book, and it says it's fine to use. If they say it's fine, it should be fine. Uh, always use the latest manuals as well, especially with ADI, uh, because from year to year, sometimes they do lower it. So as long as you keep it within what they say for that year, I think you're pretty much going to be covered. But, uh, yeah, like most of the powders are made, so you can't really double load them for the rifles. Very easy for pistols to double load them because they take hardly any powder whatsoever. So, uh, watch, here we go. What tool should I have in my range bag? Well, uh, Let me go first. Make sure you've got like a wrench, a torque wrench. Very important, guys. You know, this is one piece of equipment that I use on action screws and especially on scopes to around 18 to 20 inch pounds, not 20 foot pounds, inch pounds on your scopes. And I check them all the time, guys, all the time, because sometimes they do come loose after shots, especially at around 18 to 20 inch pounds. Um, this one goes up to 60 inch pounds. Yeah, maybe 65 inch pounds. So perfect. And you've got all the connections. I bought this one years ago, actually for my car. It was to take off a roof rack on the old Sierra. But this has got like all the connections. Like what are they called? Like some of them are called just like, yeah, hexes, these star ones. You've got, I don't know, I don't know what the terminology is, but see, they're all different, right? So there's about, what as you see at the top there, you've got one, two, three, four, five different ones, right? So basically everything there that you need that you may come across that you might need depends on, sometimes you get these weird, you know, little things, you know, make sure you have some Allen keys in your bag, small ones for your, uh, your scope turrets and stuff like that if you need to zero a scope turret. So make sure you have your very small little mini allen keys because i had one on the last trip and i luckily my mate had one well, flukily had one otherwise i was like well, i couldn't even i couldn't even turn it beyond zero because i didn't have the thing so i would have been shooting way high so luckily he had one so i should have one in the bag myself saying that but yeah yeah well i uh i have something like that this is a pro tactical one so it's nothing too fancy but i've lost some and it is a bit softer steel so some is stripped but it comes with everything you can imagine even odd ones like things like this um, and, yeah, things for your bolts, sort of odd things like that. Yeah. So that, that's got me out of trouble a bit, and I always keep a, oh, Look at this one. The hell is that? Like a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this crap, you know? But, hey, I you never you, know when you might need it. I have used that once. I can't remember what. I think it was on some silly rifle, like an Adler or something. One like this. That's like a. It's not a. That's not oh, a yeah. Philip. It's just a weird. But anyway, you never know when you might need them. I mean, I've got this one. This is a weird one too. Like, what's that? You know, but. Yeah. But you never know when you might need them. Handy for cars, and I think that set is about twenty bucks. You know, like something maybe thirty bucks. It's cheap. You know, you can probably buy it off eBay cheaper, but. I know Aaron yeah. used to tell me that, that, that used to tell me he never he just do them hand hand tidy scopes. I'm like, no, I still, no. I still do. And then Aaron, I just sir, you need to buy one of these effectively immediately. Or you've got that one there you have. You need to start using it, you idiot. No, that's not a torque wrench. That's oh. a screwdriver. And I yeah. just keep. Yeah, I do need to get a torque wrench. I agree. I yeah. agree. Uh I do carry just a whole heap of loose uh, Allen keys that I have lying around. Or Allen keys. Yep. Just a cheap one, some brand. I don't know what it's called. What, Grip well, probably from just Bunnings cheap. And what Jason said, you know, the real avid tools that he's got, i got, Scott, all the hex keys here. Yeah, same gonna here. Need. Um, this one's a super cheap auto one, like I just – SCA branded, you know, throw them in the bag. You never know when you might need them. Actually, I had one of those, and it all it all fell apart on me. I just got them all loose now. It's probably better. that It works better like that anyway because when you do this, like it always seems to slip and it's just, you know, loose. I reckon it's better just to take them off and probably use them as hand ones anyway. Yeah. 
in my um, in my gum room, I have the complete set of torque, metric, and imperial uh, you know, T handle ones. Big ones. I use yeah, I use those in the in my gum room. I use them working on cars and everything as well. Uh, the little Glock tool, always handy at the pistol range. Just flicks out. It's got a few tools on there. I use this on my Sig P320 as well. Jeez, that'd be uh, illegal, wouldn't it? Flick one like that, just popping out like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, little, little screwdriver. Actually, I've got a review coming out tomorrow or the next day on some of this real avid stuff. So it's not bad. I've got a few more things here to show. But yeah, that's a, a few basic things for the range. But I will answer more questions and we'll show some more. We've got so, heaps there, dude. We need to hit these questions. We've got yeah. we're just, well you done. Guys, guys. Fantastic. You guys never never let us down. There we go. This is one for you. It's got that word teaker in it that I don't understand. Right, guys, I've got a masterpiece chassis for my ticket 33308 left handed, finding it hard to find a toolkit with all the different bits. Yeah, man. I go find you go to those tool places, like if you don't have the bits and all that, like as I said, that little kit, you know, I've had that for years now. Like, and it's all, it's, you know what, it comes in handy at the most weirdest times. And it's also got like in there, if I take that out, that can go into like a drill. You know, it's got that impact driver bit as well. And it's just got everything I need, man. Like sometimes it just works really super well. And, you know, when you might need it. And like I said, it just comes in handy at the at the most interesting times when I need it. Like even if it's just for my car, four-wheel drive, you know, it's just there ready to go. I mean, in the uh, torque wrench, you do get a couple there as well. Um, you know, you get a couple in the kit as well. Uh, I don't think it's enough. You know what I mean? Like some of the ones I use the torque wrench on too, if I could just pull it out, I get that connector which goes in there. So that's like you can put um, your socket wrench on there for like the big nuts on your scope rings, you know. So three, what, three eighths or whatever it is, ready to go. Just punch that in, same thing, straight in. And then you can just tighten up your scope rings if you've got the big, big nuts on the scope ring bases, like your night forces, et cetera, and stuff like that, or your vortexes or your, or whichever, you know, all the ones that we've got out there. So. So you're telling me I'm doing it wrong with my big rattle gun I use for work, just da, 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 getting it in. <laughs> Never buy a scope off Aaron if that's the case now that you've heard it. <laughs> okay, here's something, and I've got something to show on this one. Funky Mark, uh, can you guys re recommend a set of punches for pistol and rifle? All I can find is Lyman. The best one I have found, and uh, there's a review coming out on this, is the Real Avid. i tell you what, I've always come back to Real Avid. They do make some great stuff. So you got, there'll be a, there's a review. I've just filmed the review for this. So you got all your punch, a bit hard to show, but you got all your punches here. And what I like about this, brass, rubber, you can screw these off and replace them with um, like a plastic one. If you want a plastic end or a stainless steel end, so you or a steel one. Me. You should send that down to me. <laughs> yeah, I might get you one for a present if you're lucky for your birthday. But uh, <laughs> I already had my birthday. I didn't receive one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I forgot about it. Bastard! What a bastard! <laughs> uh, the punches are good. Um, you'll, I'll explain more in the review coming out. But they got a, like a real rubber grip, and you get your tweezers to hold your pins while you're knocking them in. Uh, yeah, these are good. These are really good. Every punch you need comes with a nylon punch as well, so you can square them up on your uh, – on your when you're putting them in, you can square them up w without damaging your uh, pistol at all. So definitely the real Avid, they go for about 90 bucks, I think. Definitely well worth a look. It's the Acra Punch. Hammer punches. Especially when you're taking, and I did this to a Benelli Super Sport years ago. It was a semi automatic. And man, I went to, went to get, it went off the pin, mate, scratched the side of the receiver on the beautiful polished steel, man. I was just, I was burning, man. It was only small, but yeah, you got to get the ones with the rubber. You just got to be real easy. Get it in first. Like some of the, like I've got one on the, on the Dickinson 12 gauge receiver. You got to knock it in just a little bit. 
So that way it can't pop out. But when it's flat, if you slip off it, man, forget it. You're going to you know, mar up your receiver and it's just you, you're going to be pissed off. So, <coughs> whoa, yeah, whoa, hang on, hang on. There's whoa. one just before that. Very good question from Sakana308. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going up there. I'm just going to say I'm very jealous, putrid human. I'm missing my cigars. Oh. I might actually have one soon um, once I uh, feel a bit better. There you go, Jason. <laughs> Mate, 260 <laughs> Remington, I've got one. You can blast deer all day long with that thing, man. I haven't shot one yet, but my hope is, but I've got a heavy barrel. So, you know, mine would be for sitting on hills waiting for something to come across my path. But, yeah, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable, man, shooting, you know, deer with a, a 143 ELDX, which I've got. Um, like I said, mine's more of a mixture gun, long-range shooting slash hunting, so I'd probably run – 140 grain ELDM. I know Aaron likes the 147s, but he's running a PRC. So really good BC on the 143s, the 140s, and the 147s from Hornady. So uh, that's all I buy these days, pretty much Hornady ELDMs or ELDXs or VMAXs. Make good price, can't go wrong. Or Sierra, they're pretty good too. Yeah, there's other companies as well that make really good stuff too. But, you know, I don't know. I just stick with one thing and I buy the one company for some reason. I don't know. I just, I'm a bit uh, OCD like that. So, yeah, I've always had good luck with Remington. Not with Remington, I'm with Hornady. Hornady has just never let me down. Target, I like using Sierra um, with a lot of stuff as well. But yeah, run of the mill stuff, Hornady has never, ever let me down with my hunting and my long range and my mid range target shooting. So, yeah, just love it. Absolutely love it, the Hornady stuff. Here we go. Bit of cleaning. What do you think of G96? I think it's good. I, I've run it. Um, just ran out not long ago, but I get some more. But, yeah, it seems to work. That's the stuff that, uh, that you just spray on the outside of your gun as well and it protects it, but it doesn't go all oily and sticky, which is really good. So I don't I mind don't, the old G96. I don't know. Like I used to use it. Hey, it smells good, but I don't know. It's a bit expensive for my liking, man. I think there's other products out there. You can buy five liters worth of, I know Inox is not a cleaner, but you can buy five liters of Inox for 70 bucks for in the ball and to, to wipe your firearm over before putting it away, mate, just that'll be so much cheaper. And then you just buy any, a, a basic cleaning product, you know, hoppies or you know, it does the job, you know what I mean? You know, I just think, you know, it's, yeah, it smells good and it's good and no problem with the product. It, it's just a bit of a, you know, jack of all trades but master of none, I think. But, you know, and it was about $20 plus dollars more per um, can. So I don't know. I think it's good, but I wouldn't buy it from the price. That's just me personally. But, you know, if you want to buy it and you've got the money and you think it's great, have at it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, here's another one about the safes. Silica gel. Uh, Luke uses silica gel in his safes. I find that also, I know people use that, those damp red packs. They just rip the top off and put it in there. Four weeks later, they take it out and put a fresh one in, sort of like a bowl of rice. My only issue with that, though, is like I said, guys, have a look. If you can drill a hole in your safe, look at the the golden rods or the humidifier rods that run on electricity. Much better, long-lasting, keeps the gun safe, uh, humidity down. Because I always thought the same thing too with those damp rids. Once you pull the top off them, yeah, okay, it's sucking the moisture down to where it is, but that moisture is still in the safe. So I don't, a lot of people are saying it's not doing anything, it's just a waste. So might be drawing it away from the gun, but it's still in the safe. So the idea of the golden rod is to, as the air heats up, it pushes the humid, humid air out through the cracks in the safe and then keeps the internal temperature. Um, up a bit which keeps the humidity down so i don't know that's what they tell me but i've got a little high grow meter in the safe that's stuck to the wall and it's telling me 45 to 60 percent which is pretty good so that's all right yeah the only problem i've already had with rusting is my remington r1 no, 1911 45 acp that used to rust like a bitch before i started putting rice and all sorts of things i tried out in there i couldn't believe it rusts like almost overnight it got so bad, I had to pull the whole gun apart and scrub and clean everything, and it was on the verge of pitting. That's one gun I am going to get Cerakoted, but I really want to get it that uh, titanium gold finish. So it's all gold, shiny gold on my like, 1911. I'd keep them. I mean, like Mike says up here about WD-40 only lasting 
um, two to three months. You're probably yeah, you're probably right on that. But again, if you're yeah, applying regularly, you know, it's not too bad. And and don't forget, guys, don't forget to neglect. You know, at least once a year. This is where I use the heavy duty stuff. Take your stock off. It's only two action screws. Get get like a paintbrush, like a cheap, you know, a good one, a decent one, ten dollar one, so it's nice and soft. And I spray it with like Enox or Lanox, and then I just I basically almost painting the stuff on, so to speak. You know, getting in all the nooks and crannies um, when you pull the stock off areas you can't get to, and then I give it a wipe down with a, a, a oily rag that I use that's just like drenched with Enox or similar that sits in a Ziploc bag put the stock back on because people don't take their stocks off and then they go wipe their gun down and they go, oh, that's it. And then they take it off three years later and they go, oh shit, underneath it's completely like rusted and pitted. So take them off once a year, give them a good clean, give them a wipe down and don't touch that. Have a rubber glove or something, hold the barrel, put them back on and don't touch that surface while you put the stock, uh, sorry, the action back into the barrel in the back into the stock so you don't touch it. Otherwise, again, fingerprints will rust and all that. So don't forget to do that. Yeah, and people with red hair or ginger hair, gingers, apparently they their guns rust like no tomorrow. Just something in their, their sweep of their hands. That's uh, what I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but that's what – Yeah, must be because they have no soul. That's from um, South Park. Um, g'day, Kung Fu Chef. Um, chef. chef. Uh, you might be a chef. <laughs> yeah. um, hello, dude. Just popping in before I go to bed in California. Welcome. A uh, whole category of firearm was banned in a midnight session without legislation. We are slowly becoming Australia. Yeah, we talked all about the bans and the big ban that happened here a week and a half ago. Uh, yeah, it's getting pretty bad, but hey, at least you can have uh, semi autos over there, and we can't. We would still like to have Californian uh, gun laws in Australia. That'll be awesome. Yeah, I mean, yep. yeah, shit tons better than what we've got now. There we go. Tacked onto a budget bill. Pathetic. Fucking Democrats. Just as bad as, well, all of our government, really. All our governments are the same. <coughs> Happy Hunter. Here you go, Jace. Yeah, Hornady wet tumbler for brass. So, Sean, you could use a mirror. I'll never use a dry tumbler again. Agreed, man. They come yep. out almost like fun to watch them come out. If you put the right amount of citric acid or burnishing compound, man, they just come out looking fantastic. They look like brand new. Who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love the nice shiny brass? I do. Yeah. Well, Jason, you put me onto the wet tumbler after all these years, told me to go get one, and I did, and I will never, ever look back. It is definitely the way to go. It's amazing how much crap comes out of them. The water's just black after a few hours. Absolutely yeah. black. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I like what you said. <laughs> Moving out of, out of this hellhole, anyways, to a free state. Did Jason Aussie, Mew, we'll come over and see you. Went to in a free state. And then Aussie capitalist says, go to Texas. I've been to Texas yeah. about three times. The prettiest women you've ever seen in Texas, guys. But if I could move there, oh, these, yeah, mate. Just go there and you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'd love to get me a Texas lady. Dallas, Austin. You've got to probably got to get, you know, Austin's a bit left wing these days, unfortunately. But um, Dallas, you know, some nice women in Dallas, that's for sure. And there's just a bit of banter here. Uh, there you go, Jason. Our CBS have some good series of clips for intro to reloading. Yes, they do. Yeah, I was actually only looking into them just a couple of weeks ago because I, I forgot myself and I did some reloading again. How to set up my uh, my uh, full length resizing die just off and I go, I just couldn't went blank. So jumped on there and I think I looked at the RCBS one how to set up your uh, resizing die. So because I remember when I forgot to do it, I put my two sixty Remington brass through it and they absolutely stuffed two of the brass before I even start at like 70 or 80 or 80 85 dollars for 50 so i was not a happy camper about that yes i uh, don't blame you don't blame you uh, okay well i'll show one other thing that you were talking about this week jason as well with me you want to get a trigger pull i use this all the time 
Oh, had to outdo me. Had to. <laughs> the only reason I said I wanted your one, but what happened was when he went to the shop, he didn't have the he didn't have that one. So I just said, oh, yep. mate. I need one. So I got the electronic one with, um, you know, because I just wanted to see what the, you know, I want to keep consistent, especially those long range guns, even between different brands, you know, keeping it. So I know what the triggers are doing on each gun and they're, and they're going to be pretty similar, hopefully. So I've tried it the other week and it worked pretty well. So, um, yeah, it's good. So I'll just keep that. I'll take that down with me when I go on my trip in a couple of, you know, probably a month, a month or so when I'm going, I think. So we'll see how we go. How much was that one? I think it was. I got it for about 130, maybe something like that. Maybe right. Because that was about about, that was about um, 50 bucks, I think. And that's not bad. 130. Closer to like 200. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I might look at getting one of those. I feel inferior now. Just got the old manual. Inferior, sir. You are. (laughs) This this does work really well, but that would I dare say would be more accurate. No, I do like that. And I find it very handy because I use adjustable triggers at Tim Lee's in my target rifles. And it's just always good to check them. I'm going to actually hev- um, make a couple a bit heavier soon just because they are a little bit too light. So it's easy to do a uh, bad, a bad, um, you know, just knock it and it can go off. That's something I'm always paranoid about, as we talked about. <coughs> Callum. What's the story with Sierra, Sierra pills compared to Spear or Hornady? They seem dearer. Uh, I use them for target, Sierra. They are a bit dearer, but they're very, very, very accurate stuff. Uh, I, I don't know the F-class people are probably going to shoot me here, but I find them just as good as any burger. I think they are fantastic. And my 300 rum, man, just... They're amazing. I've got some to load into the PRC as well to give them a go. I but, used at the Hornady, never had any trouble. But then I know a couple of guys that are using, especially for hunting, the spear bullets as well. So the spear are a lot cheaper. Um, you know, for 100 meter shooting, it's going to probably do the job. But again, if I'm going to step up that long range hunting and shooting, I need something that's, um, you know, not guaranteed, but, you know, got some history behind it that it's proven to work. So, um, I'm not saying they don't have that, but you know, I know guys that are shooting some 308, 150s, and 165s. I think soft points, mate, stops deer stone and stone dead in their tracks. So don't feel like you have to go expensive. You know, if you're not shooting a gun that often, I'd probably go expensive as your hunting gun. You might put 10 rounds through it a year. A box of bullets is $80 or $70 for a heavy caliber, mate. You probably, <laughs> I've got a 200 of the seven mil rem mag. You probably go through that in about eight years. So if I'm lucky. So you can afford to buy it. It's the ones you shoot a lot that it's going to cost you more. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, Hornady, once again, I haven't really had much to do with spare. Never really used them. But, yeah, I've just always found Hornady work well. And for my target, I have Sierra. Uh, for my 308 and my uh, 300 rum, just something that I used, tried out years ago and just stuck with it. They just seem to have worked really well. Uh, okay, you know, he's upset. We're uh, being told Jack. off. <laughs> Hello, okay, Jay Jay Rush. Hello, Hello, Jay Rush. Welcome to the live stream. We really appreciate your attendance. We value your attendance, and I hope this shout out acknowledges your existence on the live stream. So, welcome. Yeah, we do try and say hello to everyone, but we get so, so many questions, and we only try and keep this around an hour and a half. Normally, it goes a little bit longer just so you guys don't get too bored with it. And, man, We've got hundreds of questions on here, hundreds. Um, so we are thinking. I do read them all, and I'm, I'm, I am appreciative of it all. So, yes, definitely. Uh, what do we have here? I was watching Hickok 45 and just ended up placing an order 3K, though. Uh, hurt the wallet quite a bit. What did you order? Yeah. I want Tell to know. What you ordered, dude. We want to know what you ordered for 3K. Oh, sorry, sorry, up above. Yeah. Uh, maybe it is an STI 2011. Ooh. What caliber? Tell us what caliber. A, A B, C, D. Um, yes, I take it you probably do a bit of IPSC or something along those lines. 2011s are just an updated, more sort of futuristic sort of look, uh, 1911. So uh, very nice. STIs, nothing wrong with them at all. 
nice guns. I've used a lot of them in the past when I used to do competitions. Okay, so yeah, three grand. It's in that price. Um, okay, and here we go. Um, don't get it in thirty-eight super. Uh, not at all. Too too bloody weak. Go nine mil. Um, if you want to stay underneath the high cal for our pistol limits here, go the nine mil over thirty-eight super any day. So I find when I was doing IPSC, a lot of them use 38 Super or stuff like that and really um, downloaded everything. It was just like nothing, just chuck full loads in them and learn how to shoot with full loads, I reckon, is a must because it gets you a lot more accurate faster. You've got to learn with, actually, with some decent uh, full loads with pistols, I find. Uh, yeah, because then you're not – yeah, I'm just not a fan of downloading pistol rounds at all. Okay. Can you see anything here you want to answer, Jace? Just that Rod one about five or six down. Rod Sweet Star. That's a good one for you. Yeah. Can you explain compressed loads or is it self explanatory? I heard do not compress trail boss. Sorry. Well, trail boss is, yeah, I don't know much about it. It's very fine flakes, like donuts. Very fine flake, like fish food, really, it looks like. And uh, you can just fill an entire case up, and they're still subsonic with that stuff. It's uh, mainly for cowboy action, I think. But compressed loads is just a load that's pretty much full, and the projectile sits on it, and there's less gas or basically no gas behind it. So they reckon you get more accuracy out of it because there's no gas going in behind the projectile that could uh, push it off off whack. I don't know if that's true. I just have a compressed load for my 306 because uh, it goes 3,000 feet a second and it is um, and it works really well. It just works so well for me. I get really good groups with it and up to 300 metres, I, whatever I point it at, it pretty much just goes there. It's so flat being, being a compressed load. Have you, you, you don't, and you don't agree with that, do you, Jason? Perfect answer, my friend. Perfect. Yes. Your, your silence says it all. <laughs> so many good guys are talking and having a good time in the, the chat, which is good. Here we go. Go down a few. Callum Henderson. That's a good one. Callum, yep. Um, best 22 long rifle for 800 to 1,400. I'd probably go um, – you got uh, CZ, Lithgow, probably my top two, I would say. I'd say the same thing, CZ or Lithgow. Uh, you know, something that I'm going to be trying out. Uh, it's a little bit more. It's about two grand. And that's the new Christensen Arms full carbon fiber uh, uh, 22 LR. Uh, a good friend of mine's brought one. And the thing is, this looks evil. It's just unbelievable. So that, but that is about two grand, though. Well, but you yeah. Boots or whatever as well, if you want to go step up again or. Yeah, you can see the Ann Schultz video I made that um, from uh, the reviews up. Uh, and, geez, I was getting three mil groups with um, high-end ammunition. But Ann Schultz was amazing. I but, used to know one guy ages ago. I think when when a pretty sure Winchester made the Toz, man, it was about 10 years ago. He used to just slay everything with that Toz 22. I think it was Russian or Winchester made one, but then they went to Russia, I think, if I'm correct, I'm not 100% sure. But, man, that thing was just, uh, just uh, you know, his was the actual Toz where my other mates was, the I think, the former Winchester version. But even the Russian one or the Toz, the non-Winchester version, man, that thing used to slay foxes, rabbits. Man, he used to pull off some shots with that thing. It was about 350 bucks back then, 400 bucks. Yeah, I've actually got a good video coming up soon I'm going to film. I'm not going to say what it is all about, but, uh, yeah, it's on a very cheap 22, and it could turn a few heads. And you don't have to bust the bank. Well, I put that one out on the Naranko uh, two days ago, $300 plinker. Mate, perfect. It's basically a CZ copy for 300 bucks. I know it's Chinese, and we don't like Chinese right now because of the Wuhan flu, but... Hey, it's not a bad gun for three hundred bucks. Nice mm. timber work and checkering on it for for that price as well. My mate had a um, 
one of the you know the seven the notorious the seventeen HMRs are generally notorious sometimes for not either ejecting or have feeding problems. So my mate had one like that and just yeah he had to get rid of it because it just wasn't working properly. <laughs> yeah, I, I only uh, just looked at it, did a first look at it in the shop, but I made a video. I didn't actually uh, take it out and shoot it. Okay, where can where can I buy a CZ seventy five magazine? Oh. Wouldn't have a clue. Uh, get your gun shop to phone up Winchester Australia, see if they can get something in, or more than likely just keep trolling through all the uh, message boards or put something up on a message board or uh, some of the used gun sites. Uh, worst case, you might want to look at gun broker in the US, things like that, and get the uh, permit and bring it over if you can't find it. Yeah, I wanted to get a... Uh, I got a CZ four five seven in that MDT chassis, and I wanted to get this. Only one company I found made the top rail for it, like perfectly cut out to the action. Screw it down. Um, I know Aaron gave me one of the Adler uh, top rails for it. <laughs> I appreciate Aaron for giving it to me, but you know, it just looked like a bit of an abortion. Um, so I got my friend um, uh, from he makes YouTube videos. Could I give him a plug, or should I give him a plug, or no? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so he's Chuck and TV, a friend of mine. So I got it sent to him, and then he's uh, he's already got to him in about a week, and then he's already shipped it to me. It's only a, it's not a firearms part or anything, so no, nothing needed for that to come through. Um, yeah, it's like thirty five bucks, and it's just gonna. I think it's gonna perform well. So you know, someone's look overseas. If you depends on what it is, you might need a B seven O nine A form for your registry, but. You know, most things don't like you know stocks and scopes, and I don't think they need it. So I think only when it comes to maybe bullets, you probably do. Um, but again, just check with your registry what you need, ring them up, you know, and just get it sent over. If you don't can't yeah. find it here, yeah, definitely. I would never, <coughs> excuse me, I would never bring in a scope or anything. Just too risky. If something goes wrong with it. No one in Australia is going to cover the warranty if you bought it overseas. You'd have to see the back. You had some issues before um, when you had the uh, one of the vortexes. Did they did they ask for a receipt when you had it, or they just took it and said okay? Um, uh, what happened? Yeah, they could find me on. Oh, well, I bought it from the importer years and years and years ago. So, so they just looked at. They looked up my. They, they looked up my business name and receipt. Yeah, but if you if if you sold it to me, for example, or it's third hand and it's a transferable warranty, if you don't have the receipt, then how do you know? You just got to take it to them and say, "Mate, I, I bought, I got this second, third hand. I don't have a receipt. There should be a transferable warranty, wouldn't it?" It should be, yeah, yeah. And they, uh, they wouldn't uh, have a receipt. Yeah, and then you, um, they'll swap it over. I think what it was, um, they stopped making that model, and I had to go to the next model up, and I had to pay the difference. That's something they don't tell you about. But I had to pay the difference on it. Which is not really a replacement warranty when you think about it, but anyway. No, no. I'm sure it's in the fine print somewhere. There's one for you, Jason. I'll find a few more questions. All right. I polished my brass with uh, Mother's Fine Car Polish. <laughs> How did it come out? Um, sometimes the way I used to do it, especially on the outside, was when I have yeah, the little nut you put in the drill and you put the brass in there and you tighten it up. It's actually Lee make the kit. Uh, it comes with one of the trimmers. And I used to just get that green scotch bright steel wool, put it on my drill, zzz, spin it, and then hold the, um, what do they call it? The Not the steel wool, but the green scotch bright pad over it, slide it up and down. And, yeah, all of a sudden, mate, it was brass was nice and shiny. It looked a little bit scratched, but not really. It still worked. So it just took a lot of that stuff off the neck and the shoulder and, yeah, it come out really good. So, you know, you don't have to have a tumbler, but you can buy those ones off eFlea Bay, which me and Aaron did, I think, for 100 bucks, $120. Um, yeah. There's a company, I think it's Aussie Sapphire, and they sell the pins and the burnishing compound. But you can also get citric acid. Just I'm, You can buy it from Woolworths, but it comes too small, so I'm probably going to buy one just off one of the websites that says um, you can buy like a kilo of the stuff for like 14 bucks or something, so I might do that. But I did find... Uh... Any form of moisture in the air will set that citric acid off into one big hard lump as oh, well, really? I found. Yeah, because the, the little ones I brought have, um, yeah, have, yeah, pretty much stuffed. 
Mm. So it seemed, yeah, I don't think because I just keep them, I just keep it down in my shed, so that's get a bit sort of damp down there. Uh, oh, here's something I was actually talking to Marty. As you know, Marty I used to do the show with. He's now the sales rep for Winchester, and they do CZ. And we're talking about these lever releases today. Um, well, hey, by the way, I forgot to mention one very you, you didn't notice, did you? That's a super chat. We've got our first super chat. Can't you see it? Two dollars ninety nine. Have a look at it, dude. Oh, where? Where? It's under his name. Uh, look at his name. Look under his name where you've actually clicked on the. You've clicked on his comments. It's two dollars ninety nine. Well, Paul. Yeah, have a look at it. Can't you see it? I can see it. No, it doesn't come up. Well. I'll... I'm not looking at the website, the YouTube channel. Yeah, neither am I. But it's if you look at it, where's the comment that you clicked on to bring it up? Right here. Okay, look at it. It's there when you. It's there. If you're, if it's in the right hand side column pane, you can see it on his name. It says Paul Giannane, uh a two dollars ninety nine, and it's in on my one. It's in um, blue, so it's showing a super chat. So it's our first one, three dollars. Fuck oh. yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, I'm so sorry. It doesn't say it on mine. I just can't see it. I'll yeah, have to look into well. this. It does on mine. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Paul. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, that's awesome. So, guys, yeah, feel free to donate to the show because um, everything helps to buy ammo to make these gun reviews. Uh, I've been getting a bit better now, my health wise. I'm out there shooting um, more often, and it really does cost a bit to make these reviews. Thank you so much, Paul, for that. So, thinking of getting the CZ lever release, but I'm sure Victoria government will probably try and ban them. Yeah, that's a hard one. And this is something that really pisses me off. You shouldn't have to be trying to look for a thing of buying guns, the first thing you think of. Will the government take it off me? Uh, it's just, it's just, oh, man, make a blood boil. Hey, I just figured out why you can't see it. I'm on the wrong question. If you scroll down maybe another, say, 10 to 15 questions, you'll see it's lit up in blue. That's why I can see it because I thought you had it selected. That's why it's blue. Can you see it now? Uh, no, I've got a couple of questions here, and if I scroll down too much, it might wipe yeah. them all out. So That's we'll why. get to it. Because we, we, we were clicked on the wrong one. You, you had one above that. That's why you weren't seeing it. So anyway, cool. Yes, awesome. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, and you just don't know at all if they're going to ban these guns, do you? And I think it's a really sad day in Australia where you decide whether you're going to buy a gun, a legal gun, and that they're selling and advertising, and your decision is based on, geez, are they going to take that off me? And uh, with um, in a couple of months' time, I think it's an absolute, yeah, disgrace. The cops love it; they 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 love that. Uh, people, the powers to be who do it, I think they actually get off on that. Oh, look at this! We'll just wait to a whole heap sold, and then bang, we'll reclassify it. Just a little yeah, bit look, of a power power trip. There it is, um, Paul. It's the blue one. Oh, so you can sweet. See it, see it come up in blue writing. Our oh, first yeah. one. Nice. Oh. Sweet. I've got hundreds of comments, so it does take a little bit to get through. Thank you so much, Paul. Yep. Once I always say people who watch the show are the best people. Yeah, actually love um hearing from you guys as well. When you scroll down, you should probably see it anyway. So you're about to get there. Uh there you go. I did a review on the a gun just like this. Uh best twenty two Bruno model two. Mine is nineteen fifty seven. Very nice. You can't beat some of those old 22s, can you? Ah, man, some of them are still shooting really good. Um, what have we got there? Uh, if you, oh, here we go. That's the one. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Yep, every cent helps. Um, I know things are hard and tight for people um, in this, these awful times, but thank you so much, Paul. Really appreciate it. our very first one. You will go down in history with Shooting Stuff Australia. That's <laughs> awesome. We might even get that printed. Hang on, I'll get a picture of this there right now. Let me, let me just got that. Smile, ready? Right. Smile. Smile into the camera. Right, I just did it. There we go. So now you can um, – that can go on his mantelpiece. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Um, and my thoughts on it. Awesome. 
I like the technical looking one. I think they're awesome. And they're going to be good. Um, a mate of mine has brought one, so I cannot wait to get out and give it a go. Uh, they look fantastic. They really do. Uh, so the sales rep, Marty, was saying how good they are. And they've been a huge seller. They really have. They've been a massive seller for them. I think 90 minutes, the first start uh, they brought in, sold out. And they should be here. So unfortunately, if you order one now, you're going to be further down the list, closer to the end of the year when they come in, he said, because they're going to be sea freighted. The next ones, the first batch was air freighted. You just got another super chat. Oh, geez, I want to go down, but you know, I'll get down there. We'll, we'll knock some of these on. Hang uh, on. If you go to the top, I see on the top of your chat, see how it says the top five bucks? Ah, you the Click on that. Okay. I don't know. Is that going to work? Click on that possibly. Okay, I've clicked on that. Oh, it just comes up. We don't uh, know what we're doing with super chats, guys. We've got no idea, so we'll try and figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we shoot guns. We're not very good at computers. That was from um, X Explosive. Bagara yes. HMR operator. Sweet. I'd like to know how his Bagara's going. Yeah, I haven't shot mine yet, guys. Hopefully in uh yeah, when I get yeah, yeah. One of the live streams probably soon, maybe I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be here, so I'll let you know when I come back. So Aaron will be going solo on that one. Yeah, when's that happening? I don't know, maybe about three, four weeks, we'll see. Just for the okay. weekend. Uh, Paul, um, here we go. Nick Taylor, um, I have a CZ on order from all accounts. They are excellent, and he is correct about that. Um, and once again, here we go. What bullshit. The government takes away guns and categories which are licensed and permitted. Uh, yeah, it's just awful, and it just pisses me off. Pisses everyone off, I think. And we talked about. This. Oh, and another yeah. one. Ten yeah. bucks now coming through from Happy oh, Hunter. Sweet. And there's yeah. Explosive. You guys are amazing. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. I can go buy some new shoes tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it helps with the reviews and stuff like that. It's it, anything does. it does. Yep. You know? Every Everything I get. All right. And another $10. Jesus. Oh, shit me dead. Oh, we've, awesome. got start, we've got to start screenshotting these and put these behind the um, – put them back on the wall behind you for the next show. <laughs> put oh, them out. I think so. I think so. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Phantom HD, a $10. Keep them coming. That is awesome, guys. That will definitely go towards the new reviews I'm doing. I've actually got a very special gun. It's a shotgun coming out very soon that everyone's been asking after, so you guys are going to really like it. So hey, that, one, two, Even if you click on that price at the top, it should bring up the comment of what they're saying. Just click on it once, and it should yep. bring up the box, does it? Yeah, Phantom, love loving the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, and happy Hunter. And happy Hunter. Uh, I'm in the show's biggest fanboys. I'm the show's biggest fanboys. I know. He's, uh, he's pulled uh, out Paul. He wants to be the number one fan. <laughs> started with Paul. Awesome. Now they're just competing. <laughs> nice. Oh, we've started a war. Nice. No, nah, all uh, those, that's pretty good for Aaron, man. Like, he works hard on this stuff. So, you know, I think he deserves, you know, a bit of support. So, you know what I mean? It's hard enough. I know that it's hard enough in this industry as it is, isn't it? When, you know, yeah. you're putting in content and, you know, I get, I just had an email just last week from a fellow. So he loves the show. He's been listening to it for years. But, you know, same thing. It's, you know, he loves the free content. I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's free to listen, but it's not free to make. I mean, it's hours and hours of work. I mean, we, we love doing it, but, you know, just you guys, this shows to people that, you know, people are willing to throw in a few bucks and, you know, they love the show. That's what the, it's not about the money at all. That's just nothing. It's just that you guys like it so much to put a few dollars uh, to his, his way. And that means a lot to, that's the biggest thing for me. It's not the money. It's that you guys like it a lot. So. Yes, definitely. It's, it's awesome. You know, I was just saying that I've got to saving up. I've got to get a new GoPro little one I use. It just failed. So I need to get one for the next review I'm filming. So this will really, really help towards the GoPro. I'd also like to thank Nick. He uh, donated an awesome computer to the show because my laptop is on its last legs. And I'm, uh, 
with everything that's been happening lately, it was bugger all work and everything, I couldn't afford to get another one. So he donated a really good computer to for the show so I can carry on editing. And it is absolutely amazing. So a big thank you to Nick for uh, donating a computer. It's just unreal. And it has sped up the editing process and it's really got me out of the shit. It is just awesome. And you know what? It's good that those um, super chaps show up at the top so we can answer those guys straight away. That's really good. So it's um, yep. just comes up right at the top for us so we can see it in StreamYard and in the, in the program and Aaron can play them pretty much straight away when they pop up in the top right. So good. Yeah. These guys are trying to outdo each other. I like a bit of rivalry in the chat. Well done, guys. But, yeah, uh, that's good. And here Paul, we go. Paul started the trend. Paul's a uh, trendsetter. Oh, Paul, good on him. Yeah, exactly. And thank you, Phantom. Anyway, we've probably got yeah. five minutes to go. Oh, and another one. We've got another one. They're blowing oh. up again. Red one, $5.99. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie capitalist. Thank you so much. All right. Awesome. Click, on his, yeah, click on the red one so you can bring that up. Oh, and again, $11. Oh, no. Sweet. Funky Mark, $11. I win. Nice. <laughs> nice. Wow. Okay, on, I'll just go. Them, here we go. On them and bring them up anyway, yeah. There we go. He just gave $5.99. Yeah. And Nick, thank you very much. Nick, Nick is, uh, he donated the computer to the show to help out. And Funky, Funky Mark. Mark. He wins. Yeah. He wins. <laughs> <laughs> You've set <laughs> off a chain reaction of events, guys. You guys, yeah. this is unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. you guys rock. Yeah, so oh, yeah, keep going, guys. Uh, who's going to be the winner? <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought this would have happened, man? Blowing my mind. Yeah. This is unreal. Uh, and I do like Funky Mark's um, Funky Monkey. Uh, Logie. Yeah, F Funky Monkey is a uh, thing off Family Guy, the evil monkey in the cupboard. I love Family Guy. What a oh, way to geez. finish the show. Oh, another, another one. one. $14.99. Oh, Getting in on the fun. Thank you very much, Gary. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. one. <laughs> Steve, seven ninety nine. Thank you so much. Wow. Jeez. Awesome. Uh, Guys, it will be going to good use. I've got to get some ammo for a couple of reviews, and I've got to get another GoPro, which just died on me. So thank you. This will be going uh, to very good use. That is awesome. Man, it's just insane. It's just, wow. You guys are pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, man, I, I ditches over here falling over in the bed. Just uh... <laughs> And we've reached the bottom of the comments. Well, uh, what, what an epic way to, to finish the show, man. Like super chats just coming in like tornadoes, like, you know, coming in, Hail Mary. It's just amazing, guys. Like, you, wow, wow. Yeah, yep, you guys are awesome. You really are. Um, uh, sorry if we did miss anything. I uh, hope we didn't. Uh, any of your comments uh, and your questions. But once again, we will definitely get on to them next week. Uh, thank you for everything. And, Jason, you want to talk about the podcast coming out? Yeah, I just did a politician. It's nothing real exciting to per se. Like I'm not really interested in doing politics much anymore in regards to interviewing, you know, politicians and stuff. But, you know, this person contacted me and showed interest. So, yeah, I, same thing. I've sent it out to the Patreon guys, you know, because they're, you know, you know, obviously their opinions, they're the ones that are supporting me and throwing a few dollars my way. So they said they wanted to hear it. So I said I really wasn't doing it. So it's kind of hypocritical. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, you got to give the pa Patreon guys what they want, and they not one person said no. So uh, they've already got that on Patreon. Most, I think, Happy Hunter, who was here before, he knows who it is. He's already listened to the show. Um, so, yeah, we'll, just, we'll come out next Wednesday. So it's someone I've already interviewed, so it's really nothing exciting to new. Um, but, yeah, I, I said to uh, this person, I don't want to give it away because I almost gave it away, um, you know, if you're willing to answer the hard questions, I'll do it. So this person was happy to do that. So I said, all right, I'll go ahead with the interview. And uh, they did answer some hard questions. So some good stuff going to come out of that. Yeah. No, it's uh, – yeah, what you're telling me was sounding pretty interesting, which yeah. is good. No, these politicians have to be held accountable, not just say, no, I don't believe in this, no, I don't – uh, believe in that well why don't you want it that's the sort of stuff people people want to hear they want to know why 
Another one again. Mate, Phantom, he's gone to 20. I win again. Oh, oh mate. Uh, hang on. It hasn't come up on mine. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Thank you, Phantom. You are the man. Yes, you did win tonight, Phantom, but I really appreciate it from all you other guys as well who donated. You guys are just brilliant. Paul, uh, you can brilliant. give credit to um, mate Paul. He started yeah. a bloody chain reaction, Paul. Well done, Paul. You, I, I, we got to give credit to Paul. We get, we have to because he was the man. I just saw the two ninety nine and I thought, oh, that's interesting. What's that? And then it was obviously a bit further down than where you were. And uh, yeah, got to give credit to Paul, man. He started a massive chain reaction of support. Um, I, I don't even think you knew you even set up oh, another one. Fifty. <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> this is, hasn't come up on mine yet. I got a bit of lag. Oh, here we go. In. I bloody oh, fell off oh. my chair, man. I literally just fell off my chair. Oh, thank you so much. Let's finish your night with this. Oh. Thank you. Oh, you thank what, you. Man. What a way to finish off. What an epic, yep. epic finish. Yeah, well, I will def definitely be able to get the little handy, the, uh, um, camera, that for, that's for sure. I don't buy the good GoPros anymore because uh, I have been known to have a ricochet through them. So I buy like the $100 ones. They do the job just as good. So this is just unbelievable. Man, I feel like I'm in a telethon back in the <laughs> 80s. <laughs> We're ringing up. Hey, guys, uh, yep, can I put you down for a 30? Can I put you down for a 20? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Mate, Paul, we, we might just uh, give uh, a gift voucher to Paul for starting off a massive chain reaction. Unbelievable, Paul. We've got to give you credit, mate. You've uh, you've started yeah. off a chain reaction. I guess people must mustn't have seen it, or mate, I don't even I didn't even know we could even do that if it was even set up. Anyway, yeah, yeah. No, I never really because I've had all the problems with YouTube, especially and also on the new the new channel after they deleted my first channel, and uh, yeah. All this monetization stuff and demonetizing a lot of my videos, but what they've started doing now is demonetize, saying they're not demonetized; they're just restricted. So you may get some money, but you may not get some money, and they're not telling you. So they've from they've stopped us purely cutting you off, but they don't tell you if you are or how much, or maybe every. Fifth um, view may go towards monetization, so you sort of want to keep the ads on just in case you can get something back at least to go towards the ammo and equipment. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, and like so don't get into a bidding war, guys. You know, we just appreciate. I mean, like yeah, Aaron works hard on this man, and you know, just tries to do his best, and yeah, often comes out of his own pocket. We both know what it's like, and you know, yeah. like. You get a bit emotional sometimes when guys are throwing like a few dollars at you that you just it just it just proves it's not the money it just proves that you know it's actually worth something that that's that's the most thing like I don't I couldn't give a care about the money I care about that people are willing to say mate this is awesome enough to throw some dollars behind it you know what I mean when you could watch it for free but like I always say it's free to watch but it's not free to make and um you know I'm just here to help Aaron out I don't expect any money from this I'm just here to help him out and. You know, have a banter with you guys because it's uh, it's fun. You know, so yeah, oh, so uh, this has been amazing. What You're a way ready. to finish off, dude! What a way to finish off! Like you, wow, yeah. crazy. Yeah, this is unreal, absolutely unreal. And you guys, I always said I got the best fans and the best viewers, and you guys make all this worthwhile. Whenever I get a bit down and thinking, oh, you know, I don't get many views on this video. I just read some of the comments, and even on the videos that don't get many views, just amazing. It truly is amazing. Uh, you guys are the best. Anyway, so we've got two minutes. We'll finish off about 8.40. We've got a couple of minutes. Anything to finish off, you reckon? I mean, probably uh, people to, you know, subscribe to the show, obviously. Um, yeah. Know. Exactly. And uh, it will just flick through. There's not really many more. I like Rob. Click that next one. Let's start our own political party. Yeah, mate. You know, you'd be surprised that yeah. I've had a, quite a number of people um, from some interesting parties messaging me just recently, even as much as yesterday, saying, you know, I should be running. Why don't you be considered putting your hand up? And I said, Mate, like, I haven't got time for that. I've got a full-time job, you know, but like, you know, I think I'd be, 
you know, a pretty decent advocate. So, you know, I know my stuff. I know how to talk. You can't back me into a corner and get me to say things I don't believe in. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway, interesting. It's been good. Guys. Um, you know, tell your friends, share the video. That's another good thing. Get it out there on the internet, mate. Yeah, what guys. A, have a bit of fun with each other. Yeah, I mean, just, just talking shit, answering questions, having a laugh. That's what it's all about. Exactly. I get asked a lot, why don't you start a political party? Some of them from real pricks who know just trying to have a dig at you when you give your opinion. But as I always say, I can't. A, I have morals. <laughs> and B, I'm too honest. I can't I can't sit there and blatantly lie and bullshit to people's faces, especially getting paid by the taxpayers. So I just can't be a politician. I'm too honest. And I have morals and I have self-respect for myself. So I um, definitely can't be a politician. Can you no. believe the super chats tonight? That's just, man. I was on, you saw me, guys. I was literally like having stitches on the ground at one stage. Yeah. And, yeah, no, it's <laughs> good. I'm already a One Nation member, though. That's no, good. Pauline Hanson, she's had her ups and downs with firearms, but yeah, she, at least she's not saying ban everything. That's for mm. sure. Uh, anyway, we'll probably finish off, I think, mate. I think. Yeah, and I think I'm going to have a good bloody sleep tonight. That's for sure, based on what we just saw. Um, you know, coming through on super chats, man. I just, man, yeah. wow, wow. It, it, we'll finish off with Paul. Yeah, it's it's gotta be uh, Paul, because he was the cat. Whoever I didn't even see it. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah, yep. Paul. Anyone else sort their rifles in the gun safe by caliber order, or just stuff them in? Yep. Well, left to right, 300 wind mag, 260, 243. Then I've got the 7 mil mag because that's my hunting one, so I know the three heavy barrels are there. Then I've got the 7 mil. Then I've got the 22 um, uh, T1X. Then I've got the 22 CZ and then the two shotguns. So, yeah, man, we're a bit crazy, dude. I'm a bit OCD where Aaron's a bit, you know. I agree with um, Aussie Capitalist. Stuff him in like a Bombay hooker. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'll do it. Because wherever, wherever there's a gap, I just stick it in pretty much in the uh, safe. As long as they're not getting too damaged up. But, yeah, no, I don't actually go to those links, I've got to admit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you very much, guys. Thank you so much for tonight. And thank you for everyone who donated in the super chat. You guys are the best. So please hit that subscribe button, uh, like this video, and share this video. So every video I make, if you could just share it on Facebook and Instagram, that's what really gets the word out and more people will watch it. More people watch it, the numbers go up, and they get shared in the uh, preferred videos on YouTube. Let me say one thing. I mean, that video, you got to think about it, that seven gun band video, 16, almost 17,000. That's 300% up on your subscriber base. I mean, he's got, what, five and a half thousand. That's, yeah. 15, that's three times. That's 300%. I mean, that's that's crazy. It's good. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and once again, you can find us on Patreon. Jason has a Patreon as well, and so do I. So I'll leave all our links down below when I, this video comes out tomorrow morning and you'll be able to click on and have a look at what else we do so thank you very very much guys and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart once again guys for the super chat you, i gotta say you're definitely the best and i will definitely be looking forward to seeing you guys next week so have a good and safe weekend and a good week at work and we'll see you next thursday at seven o'clock Catch ya.